Welcome to all the many guys. Sorry, I had to do a part two because uh, I was rattling on too long. So, but basically, what I was on about was these book, these uh, top and bottom ball joints. It is important that once they're on, that uh, you use this steering arm to to go completely left and right. This will really affect the steering quite dramatically if they're too tight, um, because obviously what's happening is this this uh, taper is stationary inside uh, inside the arm, um, and it's only the ball joint that's moving. And this is why these shims are so important to get it shimmed correctly. Um, so that's one way to do it with a balance, or just pull on it, and it should, as I say, about. The, the, the fig, there is a figure actually in the book, but I, th I think it's around about nine or ten pounds. But you'll know, you'll feel when it's turning easily, and it will make the steering that, that little bit lighter. But they shouldn't shouldn't be loose, and they shouldn't be over tight. You shouldn't pull it hard. It should just have a, a nice feel to it. This is an old one, but it should have that kind of stiffness to it, but no more. So um, yeah, so like I say. It's entirely up to you, but when you look at a lot of this stuff, for instance, you know, you have to think about, I mean, this is the flange, dry flange, for instance, I've taken the studs out, but this is the dry flange, and here, for instance, this is where the seal would go for the, for the bearings, so you can imagine, um, you know, this, this seal now is, is running on this area here. Now, if this is badly pitted, obviously what it's going to do, as soon as you put new seals in there, it's going to damage the seal again and then crap's going to get inside. So it really is important that you, you check all these and, and bits like the front of the CV joint, the outer, uh, you know, there's no marks on it and, it, and it's going to fit nice, nicely together. It's so important to get these uh, uh, bits and pieces right. But um, So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk to mini spares. Unfortunately, what this means is I'm not going to England until October because I have a French E-type Jaguar that I'm going to rebuild over the winter for him. The tub, not not the car, just the just the metalwork of the tub. But the whole floor, the whole floor of the car is a '67 uh, Series One like mine, and I've already done this job. And he's asked me if I'll do it for him. He's in the club, the E-type club. So I'll be going there to pick it up with my trailer. So then I'll go to mini spares at the same time and buy all this other stuff. Um, uh, I should have thought about the discs earlier. Uh, and the calipers, but I, I thought they might be rebuildable. I have another set for the other car, and I could look at them uh, and see, but I would imagine it's a much older car, it's an 84, and this, the one that we're doing now is a 94, so the chances are they'll be even worse, I would imagine. Um, but like I say, it's entirely up to you guys, but my advice would be to you, you know, I, I'm not an expert in minis, I've, I've had a lot of them, I've had them since I was 17, since I first, first car I ever had was a mini. Um, and all I would say to you is when it comes to brakes, particularly brakes, but brakes and steering, be very cautious. I have a new steering rack. I, I have done it before uh, when I was a young man in the Marines and I didn't have the money. And I was buying these cars for, for five pounds or 15 pounds tops, whatever, which was a bit of money then um, in, in the uh, in 69, early 70s. But it, it really isn't worth messing around with. It's your life and somebody else's life on the road. Um, and, and it will come up on an MOT if the steering's not right or the brakes are not right. It just isn't worth it. If the car can stop and steer, you're fine. The engine breaks down, so what? You're not going to hurt anybody or yourself. So that's my advice. If, if you think you've got a little bit of an issue with it or you're not sure about these brakes, um, then... Um, uh, Go to a pro or, or, or get another set or a recondition set, whatever. Or uh, but make sure they're done right. I've seen where people have put the seals in the wrong way around. It doesn't work on the mini, but on some ones there's a lip on them, and they can be put in the wrong way around, and, and it's very, very dangerous. So uh, that's really it. I, I didn't want to do a second part, but that's why it came up. I'm going to show you now the um, subframe, the front subframe I've got on the car. So you can see here. There's the new shocks for it. These are the new tie rod arms on it. Um, and this is a little thing as well. They suggest, mini spare suggest that you put the, the softer uh, of the rubbers on the inside and the, and the nylons on the out. Um, and these are obviously adjustable as you can see here. I think that one's open, is it? I'm not sure. Yeah, you can see that's adjustable so I can adjust it to the right. On this one, you can see it's got the aluminium uh, spacers. Uh, that, that sandwich in between the, 
the, the turrets um, and uh, where the, there would normally be a rubber, um, the kind of elongated rubber that goes in there. The problem with a rubber one is if you, if you uh, ever go to your car, open up the bonnet, get somebody to sit inside and, and turn the steering and then look over, you will see that there's movement. Um, and, and this is the problem when, when they're rubber and, and these ones as well where they've got rubber sandwiches. These are solid ones and, and they used to have rubber sandwiches on them. Again, it's the same thing. So basically it meant the whole subframe, the whole front subframe was sitting on rubber. So you can imagine the steering not, can't be as direct as it would be. Obviously it's got a tolerance where it stretches to a point, but to have rubber mountings on everything. And they did it, the reason they did it was because they thought it would be less noise. That's, it, that's why they put it in. It wasn't really for any other reason, but the steering is much, much more direct when it's all solid. Um, uh, so, uh, and you've got your own, your engine mountings anyway, so it's no big deal. And you can see even the front ones are the same. So what I've got to do now, this is the high lows that are going on it. So obviously I need to have new balls there for them. Um, and then I'll put in, uh, where the top arms go, I'll put in new shafts and new needle rollers as well, because they're, they're quite bad. Um, and then we'll go from there. What I will do is put the subframe in first and I'll probably run it with just these old CVs in the front that I'll take the shafts out, just put the CVs in because obviously you can't tighten up the hub and put the wheels on because I need it mobile. So I'll probably use them initially. Um, so yeah, that's it really. Um, there's, there's, there's lots of, you know, different things, different kits and stuff you can get for these cars. Um, but, you know, I would say at the end of the day, um, you know, go with what you're comfortable with. If, if you want to put it back with a the rubber, then, then go with the rubber, or you want nylon. Uh, there's different styles. There's, there's nylon, there's this, there's all kinds of stuff. So, you know, decide what you want. But these high lows are definitely the way to go because they're adjustable, and that's, that's the thing with the minis. You know, these, these, uh, these cones can, even though they're brand new, uh, they can be a, 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 the to, they're not a tolerance with the tolerance fit, but but they, they, they're, the elastomer in them is not always perfect, and sometimes you find the ride height is a little bit different. You can see that one's already popped in place. Well, it's not in place; it's not set up, but it can't come out like that. So uh, you can see that this subframe though is in really good condition. This is the original one; it's not brand new. It's been reconditioned and uh, sandblasted, and then we and then we painted it up. So, yeah, so that's it. Um, as I say, you can see they're the solid ones. It will just make it much more direct, the steering, much more precise, because there's no movement between this and the subframe and the car, um, w w because the steering is mounted to the subframe. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, I'll probably give you an, uh, a YouTube uh, probably during the week or something, perhaps when I go back over, pick up the other stuff. And uh, yeah, and it, oh, by the way, and, uh, I see Matt Green now has decided that he's going to build a jig. I, I did mention it to him uh, some time back, and he said he was going to do it without it because uh, he wanted to show the guys it can be done. Of course, it can be done without a jig, but I mean, if, like, if it makes life easier, then in my opinion, you should go for it. But obviously, the jig that his father made for the original uh, Mark One he had was obviously too tall and he couldn't turn it in his garage and he, now he's going to build one onto the floor which I think is a smart idea you know if you're doing that amount of work believe me the jig is the way to go I keep saying it and uh, other people have said no I'll go without but to me it make, doesn't make any sense to um, punish yourself or, or hurt your back or break your you know or, or make things difficult Make life easy if you possibly can, because then you'll come back and do more and more and more. If it's difficult and it's cold and your fingers are sore and welding's hitting you, welding sparks and blobs, you're going to shy away from it. So make life comfortable, make life easy, and, and you'll enjoy doing it. So take care for now, and uh, catch you in a few more days. Bye for now. Bye.